What it do, YouTube? It's your boy, Mark Man YC, and we back with the reaction. Today, we are watching the complete compilation of LeBron James' greatest stories told by NBA players and legends. Listen, that LeBron James documentary that's going to probably come out in like 15 years, I don't think there's going to be anything like it. I think when that documentary comes out, and people can really look at LeBron James objectively, <coughs> Because people aren't going to appreciate the greatness that they're looking at while they're looking at it. When they can actually objectively look at LeBron James and Michael Jordan's basketball career, like, and really see what's really going on, I think people are going to really see LeBron James as the GOAT. Because that documentary, even if you want to say LeBron James is not as great as Michael Jordan or MJ is the greatest, that documentary that's going to come out when LeBron retires or whenever or long after he retires... That's gonna be, that's gonna be crazy, bro. You thought Last Dance was crazy, and it was, but the LeBron documentary gonna be crazy, bro. Welcome <clears throat> to the complete collection of LeBron James's greatest <clears throat> stories told by NBA players and legends. This is part one of a three-part series because obviously LeBron James, being one of the greatest players in NBA history, has countless stories, and this video would be about two hours long had I not broken it up into three parts. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you haven't seen any of the other episodes within the full series, there is a playlist. Oh. <clears throat> Should I react to that? Are you, are you guys interested in seeing me react to these type of uh, the greatest stories told by NBA players and legends? Let me know. In the description box down below. If you're not interested in it, I won't react screen. to it. If you click on that, you'll find all the episodes within the series. <clears throat> because this is such a long episode, even broken up into three parts, it has taken me a long time to create. And I would really appreciate if you guys could quickly hit that like button before the video begins. If you're new and you like videos just like this one, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification button so you are notified when a new episode drops. Lastly, I wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas and a wonderful 2022. Without further ado, here's the complete collection of LeBron James' Greatest Stories, Part 1. We play in different eras. He's, he's an unbelievable player. Yeah, he's one of the best players in the world, if not the best player in the world. When you start the comparisons, I think it is what it is. You know, It's just a stand-up measurement. You know, I, I take it with a grain of salt. He's a heck of a basketball player. What the hell does that mean? It was like when, when God made him, he was like, all right, I'm going to do all this. I'm going to take everything, but I'm going to take one thing from him. I ain't going to do no lie. <laughs> but I'm going to give you everything else. Nope. Nigga said I ain't going to let you have a hairline. Now, that's valid trade. I ain't going to lie. That's hilarious, though. D-Wade is... Now, like, he, can't even have <laughs> nah, he remember, did, though. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I even told nobody other than my close circle. I remember it was... Um, it was a play we was trying to run <laughs> our teammates forgot the play and Brian told him the play. He said, if you miss these free throws, you know who's going to win it. All right, now, what makes it what makes it worse, what makes it worse is this. Brian says, I'm going to get to this spot and shoot. But if I get here and any one of them is flinching off of their man, I'm beaming it to that man. Right here. And... We've been spoiled. Yeah. It's, it's just been it's just been remarkable what he's been able to do. I feel confident because I'm the best player in the world. It's simple. He has to share basketball now. <clears throat> like he's it's it might be his biggest superpower, his ability to get everybody on the same page. Like, it's actually kind of scary. <laughs> I'm scary how, like, he can just, ex he can explain this game forward and back. It's, he has a very high IQ, basketball IQ, right? Wow. It's unbelievable. You talk about somebody that know the playbook, know where everybody's supposed to be, know the other teams, coaches, playbook. Mm -hmm. Spo, after the game, after you guys beat the Lakers, was asked about LeBron and uh, the matchup in the finals. And he said in the finals, LeBron was making adjustments to our adjustments to the adjustments and not making an adjustment to the adjustment. I thought about making an adjustment. It's and chess. I was making the bluff. It's really chess. Like, it's really chess, bro. You really got to think, bro. 
legendary quote from Spo. But <clears throat> I think what he's trying to say here is, is just goal. giving LeBron credit for how intelligent he is on the court, and especially after he plays a team in the finals six times. I assume he has a great grasp on what's going on. I'd say three to four guys have talked about LeBron doing this in the show over the last year of him knowing uh, knowing the other team's plays before they happen and basically just calling out the plays. To knowing, knowing plays, knowing player tendencies, coach tendencies, like it's the amount of the amount of knowledge that, that he has stored in his head is, is phenomenal. I didn't realize it until I was in it in that really in the playoffs last year or in the finals it's almost like he's playing chess he is when he gets the ball at the top of the key he's like moving players pointing give me that what are you things. doing give me that it's like chess right like they're they're two moves ahead yeah we talked about this with with uh kyle corver last episode we, i'd say three to four guys have talked about lebron doing this in the show over the last year of him knowing uh knowing the other team's plays before they happen i think what makes him great his greatest attribute is his ability to do it again tomorrow. Like his ability to recover in mind, body, and spirit on a day-to-day basis is it's out of this world. Like it's 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 unbelievable. Um, it's uh, I, I I walk away from those years. And you know, it's one thing when you're playing against them, it's easy to you know get hater narratives in your head. But then you when you're with them. And you see his dedication to his craft. You see what he puts into it every single day. He is literally the first person there and the last person to leave every single day. And he's the he's LeBron James. And he's been to the finals so many times in a row. He's been to MVP all those things. Like I, it's it's it, to me that is his greatest <clears throat> achievement. Is just showing his ability to keep going, um, to mentally stay focused, to uh, just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. LeBron just keeps knows swimming. every scheme. Knows every coach. Knows every player. He knows players in college. You know what I'm saying? Like, when we talking about shit like this, he's put together an amazing body of work. I'd say the misconception with him is that the losses it. came from a lack of what he's capable of, and it's not. It's, uh, I think his losses is just his style. That's just how it goes, because Braun plays it the right way. Mm-hmm. At the end of the game, when Mike says... I don't give a fuck what happens. I'm shooting this shot. Bron says, I'm going to get to this spot and shoot. But if I get here and any one of them is flinching off of their man, I'm beaming it to that man. I didn't know you could be that detailed and have that much knowledge about the other team and the other players. And- uh, It's hard to disagree with that. But, I mean, this idea that Michael Jordan didn't pass at the end of games, I don't, like... I don't feel like it's true. Like, I feel like he he's less likely to pass than LeBron. Like, I feel like the difference between LeBron and MJ and this idea that MJ and Kobe don't pass at the end of games, I disagree with. Uh, I think the difference is <clears throat> LeBron or Kobe and MJ, they're more likely to pass when they're getting doubled. And somebody's open. LeBron's gonna pass even if he's not getting doubled, but somebody's open. That it's a little bit different because a lot of times when when somebody's in help, a lot of times they're in no man's land. They're like just in help, right? They're not fully double teaming. They're not fully off their man. Like they're in. They're uh, they're a step and a half away, right? When you when they're when you're playing defense, especially in high school, right? Th- or this is something that I learned when playing in high school, right? When the ball's on one side of the court, right, you have to be, you have to see man and ball, right? So if I'm playing corner, if I'm guarding the corner, the ball's on the other wing, I need to be about a step and a half to two steps away. I need to see the ball and the man, right? So that way, if the if penetration happens, I can get over and help. We can stop the penetration. If he kicks, I'll be able to get back to my man, right? So I think the difference between Kobe and MJ, like Kobe and MJ versus LeBron is that if, if I'm in that help, if I'm two steps away, LeBron's going to hit the corner. If, if, I'm, if I'm in a position where I can't get back in time to really contest the shot, LeBron is more likely to hit that man versus Kobe and MJ is Kobe and MJ are going to make you double, right? They're going to actually make you send two on them. So when Kobe and MJ, it's not really about you 
It's not about the man being open. It's just the fact that I'm getting double team versus LeBron. It's more about even though I'm not getting double team, somebody's open. So in a situation with Kobe and MJ, if I'm in help, if I don't rotate all the way to the paint and show face or show whatever, if I don't rotate all the way to the mid range or the post up or the three point line, wherever they at, and show complete face, then they're they're more likely to not shoot it. You know, so that's at least that's the way that I see it. You know, it's just another weapon to have. Like Bron's one of them where you'll be like, we going to the Philly tonight. He'd be like, no, but they just hired the the, the new defensive coach. But he was at Georgetown for three years, and I played for him one time at camp. And he, he his this is how they gonna play us. And you'd be like, what? It's times that you got somebody that's been red hot, and they running it off, and we'd be like, um, yeah. The sound report said that he's like, yeah, but I let him shoot that because in the left corner, he only shoots 26%. He shoots, yeah, he shoots 46% from three, but he only shoots 26% from the left corner. And you'd be like, yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. It's bro, crazy. Thanks, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. make me feel like I ain't do my homework. Yeah. You know I, what I'm saying? I saw one time, like, he at a uh, news conference after the game, and he ran the whole play down. I'm sure you saw yeah. that, right? And he ran the whole play. He passed the ball down, got the rebound, came down, threw it in the left corner. He broke the I read the whole sequence down. I'm like, and it's nothing now. Good. The fourth, I think they cut it to 14. Um, do you have any idea of what? I mean, I think they scored seven. That's actually a fire mic. Got that mic attached to the iPhone? That's pretty simple. That's 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 W idea. Quick ones. Anything, what happened there? What happened? Um, we ran them the first possession. We ran them down all the way to two on the shot clock. Marcus Morris missed the jump shot. Followed it up. He got it. They got it dunked. We came back down. We ran a set for Jordan Crawford. I mean Jordan Clarkson, and he came off and missed it. They rebounded, it. Um, and we came back on the defensive end, and we got a stop. They took it out on the sideline. Jason Tatum took the ball out, threw it to Marcus Smart in the short corner. He made a three. We come back down, missed another shot, and then um, Tatum came down and went 94 feet, did a roll step, and made a right hand layup timeout. Yo, that's insane. Like, even... And he made a right-hand layup is crazy. Like, what is going on? How? Went 94 feet. Eurostep, Euro right-hand right -hand layup, timeout. timeout. Nah, that sequence is crazy. That sequence is crazy, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. There you go. Like, it's scary because there's times that he be in the game. He'll be like, he don't mean to do it, but he'll be like, like, Jay, your hand. Like, he'll just throw it to the hand. Snatch it, palm it. And then he'll say, he'll like be in a post up and he'll be like, sure, if he move, if he move, cut, cut right behind him if he move. And he'll start his dribble. Tristan, cut, cut, take it with you. And everything he's saying, you just watch it happen. It happens. And the moment that man flinched, I'll sprint behind it. Catch, dunk. Works right through. It's times he done told us on the bench, Kevin, it's going to be there. And all I'm thinking is, dude finna steal this pass. Bronda took that mug and threw this behind his back. Oh! Down the baseline. Into the corner. Somebody That's wild, shoot. though. Like... Like I right, like I right, let's freeze frame for a second. Like let's look at every let's look at what's going on right here. So at this point, the decision to pass the ball has already been made. Like you can see it. Like at least that's what I'm seeing. Like the decision to pass the ball has already been made. So he's just waiting for the timing. The ball he's basically mid pass. What's really developed? <clears throat> What's going on for real, though? Like, what's really going Dude, on? For the steal this pass, Bronda took that mug and threw this one behind his back, down the baseline, into the corner. Somebody done slid to the corner behind a little screen and shot this down. I'm like, this boy done threw this ball 
He done caught this ball, ain't dribbled it, and pawned it and threw it like a bowling ball behind his back all the way across the court. And I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm on the court. I'm just like. What? Even I'm sitting there baffled. You know what I'm saying? Like, but at that point, it's it's beyond basketball. It's Like, to me, it's just beyond basketball. At that point, like, you're just inside niggas' brains. Like, you're just like, it's not even really about basketball. It's more just like. You're just a step ahead, like, like, and being a step ahead in basketball is like being able to read, because it's I feel like it's a slight difference between being able to read a situation, right? So if I'm dribbling up the court, right, I can I can read what somebody's gonna do based on maybe a facial expression or like you know just a subtle body language. This right here is just like. And I could be completely wrong, but it, it it's just like mentally, like he's on a different wave. It's not even it's not even basketball, cause like being able to guess, like okay, if I once I drive, I see, I I can tell he's bouncy, he's anticipating, like I can tell, you know, when somebody's guarding me in the post, the way they pushing up on me, all I have to do is a pump fake, post fake, pump fake. I'm gonna I'm gonna get him off his feet. Like that's really being a, one step ahead in basketball. This right here just seems like he's mentally like on a different wavelength. Like he's not regular. So <clears throat> man, like he gonna do some stuff, but he can break like you said, he can break it down. X four did this, so I did this. Right. If X three does this, there's no way he can recover to this. I don't even have to look over there. I know he's gonna be there. I can just throw it. That's crazy. For years I always caught so much flack. You know, us being the, the better team or whatever we was at, at one point in the, in the Eastern Conference Finals and people not realizing, like, it's, it's it's tough to get past this motherfucker. I don't care who you are, you know what I mean? And see him come to the West and be able to do the same thing, it's, it's, it's a testament to his that greatness was. and, you know, his Good IQ foul. to the game Good when, foul. when you go out there and play. You know, um, I remember um, when you said 16 when we went to the Eastern Conference Finals, um, we won game three and four, and it was like a whole nother mindset click for him and the players to coach against. And one most difficult and going through them with the, in the playoffs was LeBron James. This guy was looking in your mouth like right there and just calling it. It was telling the players exactly what was going to happen on the play that you called. And I remember, I don't, I don't know if I even told nobody other than my close circle. I remember it was. Um, it was a play we was trying to run, and one of our teammates forgot the play, and Brian told him the play. But I was also in the gym when I watched him on the floor against Toronto tell Patrick Patterson where he was supposed to go on the play they had called out of timeout late in the fourth. At that point, like, <clears throat> what's your next move? You forget the play. Let's say you're in a game, right? You're in a, a whatever, rec game, whatever, right? You're playing bull. You have a coach. Yo, damn, I forgot to play. And the nigga on the other team says, yo, you're supposed to be right here. What's the next move at that point? Because at that point, I don't want to run a play. Honestly, I don't even want to play basketball anymore. Like, I feel like I'm not supposed to be here. Like, I feel like I feel out of place at that point. Like, I'm not supposed to be here. So at that point, it's just like, I don't know. Like, I kind of want to just sit down on a bench. I kind of just want to leave. <clears throat> But at the very least, I can't run the play no more. Like, that's just crazy. He's like, no, Pat, you're supposed to stand over there and you're going to pin down for DeMar over here. <laughs> wow. That's, that's hilarious. That's who he is. <laughs> like, it was some crazy shit. It was some, like, it was some crazy stuff. We called in a play and he was like, what? And Brian told him what our play was. You know, and it just shows you, like, how locked in this dude be when it comes to that come the winter time, man, and, and you see it when he out there on both ends, man. But that change, and you, you know this, like, we, we beat him a couple times when he was in Cleveland. He was not that way. I, I've never seen a change in a player. Uh, I knew we were in trouble in Miami uh, when we were coaching. When we, he was in Cleveland, he was just playing right, basketball. Right, right. We get to Miami, and he's in Miami now, and he's calling our plays out. He's staring over at our bench. Yeah. Uh, he's he's uh, he's reading stuff, and yeah. I remember saying, oh, "Oh, this is not uh, this is not <laughs> good." Uh, you know, there there are a lot, and 
Dwayne brings it up, there's when you're drawing a play in a timeout, you know as an opposing coach that that one guy can can screw things up for you. I know you know the famous, you know, free throw, LeBron, mm. you know. The, so yeah. so what did he say to you? And then how did you, like, how were you able to, like, maintain your focus? Well, you missed him. We were respectful there, but, like, missed him. But, like, how did you lose sight, like, for what you were trying to do? Like, make the free throw and then... Uh, okay, so we have to back up a little bit <clears throat> because... Um, <clears throat> I was balling. Bang! God damn it! He busting the ass. <laughs> I was I was balling that fourth quarter, and we miracle comeback. You know, um, down three. Um, I hit the uh, hit almost like a thirty footer to, to take us to overtime. That's farther than thirty. Um, kind of got a little tired. In, That's like thirty five you know, overtime, but. Got to the free throw line. You know, it's butter. Game's over. We have one. I'm about to hit these three. This is easy. This is easy. And LeBron comes by and taps you on the chest and whispers something to you. What did, what did he tell you? He said, if you miss these free throws, you know who's going to win it. Mm -hmm. You know, and when he tapped me and he's like, <clears> you know, if you miss these, you know, that's game. And for that one second, I became human and thought about it. I'm right now. What makes it what makes it worse? What makes it worse is this. So because we gambled at LeBron's house, me, Damon Jones, you know that was our group. Right. So Damon Jones is horrible. Horrible. He was horrible. Horrible, horrible in cars. <laughs> so he owed me money. So I always used to say, like every time we played them, I always used to scream out. <laughs> The landlord's here. The landlord needs his rent money. Right. You know, that's, I, like, every time we came to town, shoot around, I'm yelling it. The game, I'm yelling it. Like, that's all I yell. <clears throat> so, I told the coach, hey, anytime you put Damon Jones in, I'm going one more flat. He owes me money. Until he pays me my money, <laughs> one full flat. That's out of control. He's going to be a liability out on his court. And that's what I did every time he came in, one full flat. So Dave wasn't, so he stopped playing. So he doesn't even play in game six. So when he when he whispers, you know who's going to hit it, everybody assumed it was him. I knew what he was talking about. You know, and it, and it had me thinking about it. And, I'm, and I, I can even see it on my face when I watch, like, oh, yeah, you're missing these, bro. Mm -hmm. And then I missed the first one, and I'm sitting there like, how the hell did I miss that? That's just so off. Mm -hmm. Missed the second one. And I'm sitting here like. You so it's over. Yo, did this just really happen? Where did I go? I don't miss free throws. I don't miss much free throws. And I think the thought went into my head of they really gonna put Damon Jones in and let him hit a shot. And I just I just missed. Like it was like I was I was balling that game. Just hit the three to get us in overtime, playing great in overtime. Um, very great battle. And then I see Damon Jones in there stretching. And, and they really put the man in, and the fact that LeBron even passed him the ball is what hurt the most. Ooh, Jones. Ha, ha, that's so funny, cause it's so true though. It's so true, bro. The fact that LeBron even passed him the ball, it's like <clears throat> it that that gotta humble you though. Like you embarrassing this man in the cards, right? Then every time you playing, you talking about the landlords here. Then every time you get on the court, you ISO. One four flat, that means ISO. Get out the way. I'm cooking him. They don't play him. Then LeBron taps me on his chest and says, you know who's going to hit these if you miss. Then you actually miss. Then LeBron is actually willing for somebody who didn't play the whole series. You got to understand this, though. This is a playoff game. This is not no regular season game. If a regular season game, it's a little different. You know what I'm saying? This is a playoff game. For a guy who doesn't even play, for LeBron to even give him that opportunity had to hurt. Like, humble you. <clears throat> Somebody you've been embarrassing. And you cooking. You on top. You on top. You killing. You hit the deep three. That was a deep three. 
You know what I'm saying? You get money in overtime. You really that guy. You at the line. All you gotta do is hit these free throws, ice it, and just like just when you thought, like just when you wouldn't even, just when you're not even thinking about him, LeBron even willing to pass him the ball in that situation. Somebody who wasn't even contributing in the whole series based on what he's saying, like he couldn't play this and that. He's embarrassing him, like. The fact that LeBron allowed him to even get the opportunity in a playoff game, game six, is crazy. Like, that got to humble you. Like, you got to really be so humbled after that. The corner just came in the game for the first time in two games and hit the shot. Who, who, who does that? <laughs> that, that, that that's, what, that's what I said. I, I had to, that's what I said. I went to go, like, do mental stuff. Right. Like with the uh, uh, with the uh, mental training, because I, I was like, ah, this thing just happened. You didn't tell me this man was gonna come in and mm-hmm. hit, and then he comes in and then you pass him the ball like he's done hit five straight. That's three. what I'm saying, bro. Because I, I don't want to be the, the next uh, Nick Anderson out here. LeBron is 36, turns 37, I believe, in December. Yeah, man. Um, how's he still like? What makes him special? And even when you talk about mileage. And how you know how he's doing it, night in and night out. Where you talk about usage rate, you talk about you know um, load management. He ain't doing what Kawhi is doing. He ain't doing what these other KD. And I love KD. I love Kyrie. But you know KD just and took AD off. AD hurt. AD hurt. So LeBron got to take on more with LA. Right Wait, now. KD was load managing. I thought KD was. You know what? We are not going to get into that. So like, <clears throat> what makes him special? You know, you had that. It's yeah. This dude up there. He left the hospital with more than everybody. Bro, bro, listen, bro, Brandon, be smart. This dude out, up the, there, out, bro. out the womb, bro. His shopping cart of talent when he was born was bigger than everybody's. Dog. It gave him everything. Dude behind LeBron, he don't have nothing. <laughs> yeah, but get, but you gotta give me more, man, because we know what goes into it, the sports science. How niggas gonna say I need more? Like, bro, like the way he talks about basketball. The way he mentally maneuvers around basketball, like, like God created him to play basketball. There's no discrepancy. Like, I, I, me personally, based on these stories, I don't know anybody that loves basketball as much as LeBron. So when God puts you on this earth to do something, to do what you love to do, and you are a steward of that gift, the way that LeBron is, you're going to get those type of results. Whatever from how, how old was LeBron playing ball? Probably since whatever, years old, like six, right? So let's say God gave you a gift, right? And he gave you all the tools to to be the best at it. <clears throat> and ever since you were a, a little kid playing or doing that thing, being a steward of that thing, getting up five o'clock in the morning, uh, uh, working out relentlessly, spending millions of dollars, whether it is on your body or your brain or whatever you need to do to upkeep that thing, and you are a steward of that gift, of the of that uh, whatever thing you love to do the most, whatever you love to do the most, what do you think the result's gonna be? What do you think the result's gonna be? Like I need more. Like niggas don't understand. Like that's really the thing. Like niggas don't get it. How we eat, how we sleep, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. What are we not seeing that you saw? Yeah, right. You guys have a chef for the show, right? We we understand about putting in your body. We understand about the, the the training that you need as athletes, former athletes. We understand the training that you need. But ultimately, man, I've watched I've watched this guy and I, I see him take care of his body. I see him own it 100. percent But I've also know that guys can roll their ankle and be out four weeks. I've seen this guy roll his ankle and come back and get you about 20 in the fourth quarter. I'm talking about a bad roll ankle, and I'm like, oh, he done. He come right back. I'm out four weeks with this row ankle. He come right back four quarters, score right. twenty. Right. I'm out four weeks. It's like when, when God came <clears> to <throat> me, he was like, all right, I'm gonna give you all this. I'm gonna take everything, but I'm gonna take one thing from it. I ain't gonna give you no lining. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna give you everything else. That's what I tell bro. I'm like, he gave you everything. He gave him everything. He just said, I'm gonna just take this one thing. But when is he gonna let it go though? <laughs> no, he listen, as long as he got money, he ain't letting he, it go. He's too rich to let it go. Do do you think he carry in his pocket? The GOAT conversation. Does he want to be better than MJ? He said he's the GOAT. And then after I stopped, I was like, 
<clears throat> that one right there made you the greatest player of all time. You know, everybody was just talking how they were the greatest team of all time. Like, they was the greatest team to ever assemble. And for us to come back, you know, the way we came back in that fashion, I was like, you did, you did something special. Like I said, man, bro, you my dog. You know this, though. Me and Bro been in arguments about this, though. Well, does he not, take that? Does he like? Is he conscientious about that shit? Bro laughs at that shit, bro. Because like I feel like he's he has the, in the conversation. Why the fuck does? I he mean, get, I feel like he is the conversation. He's getting compared to Michael Jordan, though. We have real life arguments in barbershops about who's better between him and Mike. So let me ask you this, though: Who he go get bad for? He don't get bad, bro. That's what I'm saying about Bron. That's raw as fuck to me. And one. Me personally, <clears throat> I would be like, Mike got to play me one on one. Most people want to be the goat, and you can't get. Huh? Right? Like, we fall short. We run out of talent. What are you I talking ran out about? of talent. Injuries or whatever. LeBron is actually there. Do you think that takes away? Do you think <clears throat> having this conversation sometimes takes away from what LeBron has accomplished? Yes. Though? Because he's not done, and we're talking about everything he's doing now, right? We talk about the goat, the greatest of all time. That's when a player is done, and now you can put their resume versus the next resume. Right now, we've been we've been talking about LeBron as a GOAT since 2010. We're 2021. This man still got another five years to play if, he, if you know, God willing, he don't get hurt. So, right, like facts. I said, he will be a GOAT. <clears throat> Someone's going to say LeBron's my GOAT, hands down, nothing else. Just like I say, Jordan's my GOAT. It's generational GOATs. That's what people got to understand. It's a yeah, lot of eras. great players that play sports. But it's eras of GOATs. And everyone want to make one GOAT. It's, it's impossible to make one He's GOAT. Right. He's because right. He's right, though. LeBron Realistically. Is, it will be <clears throat> another. This is just the way the game is. This is the way the world works. It will be another person that come in and become someone's goat. He's absolutely right, though. <laughs> Talk to us about two. I mean, there's a I don't know if it's true, but it's I heard absolutely it. right. Bron saved your life. Man, it's look, the swimming shit. Any truth to it? I it's, it's, it's true. true. It's, it's, it's true, man. We was what happened? We was in like the little grotto, like in the Bahamas. You know, you can swim underneath. Because Jack is great to get in the bathtub, so you can't swim either. I can swim, but uh, I'm gonna tell you some real <laughs> shit. I can, I can survive. Okay, that's I can important. survive. That's what you mean. So we in there and. We trying to get back, everybody swimming back to the, to the boat, but I, I'm snorkeling too. We snorkeling on the way back. And my head is in the water, and I'm snorkeling, and I look up, and every time I look up out the water, the boat is further and further away. Oh, no. And I'm getting pushed by the current. By the undertow of current. And I'm like, <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo. Like, niggas is looking at me like, like I'm joking. <laughs> yo. Stop playing, Melo. Stop playing, Melo. Yes, I was exhausted. I'm like, I ain't gonna fight that current like that. So one guy was like, just don't fight it. You know what I'm saying? Let it just go with it. Go with the flow. And I see Ew. Like, you know, Aquaman. Aquaman jumping in the water. <laughs> I was because D Wade was right in front of me. Uh -huh. He got on right before me. So I'm thinking D going to come back, but I know D ain't rocking with the water like that. You know what I mean? So he over there like, he like, yo, yo, go get him. Like, he said, go get him. And I just see Bron, bro, I just come like, I got, I got you, champ, I got you. I got you, Melo. Grab me. We went back, we went back to the boat, man. Really? It's all purpose. LeBron is all purpose. So, so you know, the guard, all kind of shit. But it's crazy because he can really, he's really good at a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't give for what it is, he's going to be successful at that. Mm -hmm. He's going to figure it out. One of them people. He's just one of them, he's just one of them natural freaks, man. You just, I call him a lab baby, man. Right. He, he was built in that. <laughs> <laughs> How do you Watch not? LeBron. How do you not play with LeBron after something like that happens? Like, how do you not want to team up with niggas like that? I don't know. And <clears throat> we've all been hampered, if not spoiled, <clears throat> to the fact that he's been consistent every year to come out with this certain level. But we forget that LeBron is great while he's playing the game. But let's just talk about Ooh. his progression. Obviously, Tay, you you played him. You've <clears throat> seen um, moments where he was over the top great. Talk about just his greatness and how you know how we are spoiled as fans, and uh, his greatness and what he's putting on the game. You know what? Uh, you know from the time that he first came in the league, you know, saw it. his debut in Sacramento where he was attacking the rim with, you know, ferocity and right. finishing. And right. As you can see here, when he had that uh, phenomenal second half against us, it's right. like he just hit a turbo. But Man. you know, we in quicksand. Yeah. Right. You know, we went to fifth straight conference finals at that moment. You know, we didn't play 500 games in five seasons. Right. We in quicksand. My man putting the turbo button on, and he's still doing it. It's like he hitting the R1 on you. He's still hitting the turbo button to this day. Well, there's no reason for us to be here if we want confidence. 
May 30th, that's on God. That's on God. It's a fact. The series was tied two to two. Being in the college <clears throat> barbecue field in the playoffs, that's one of the most hostile environments to be in. You just feel like it's just you 12 against the whole city of Hey, Detroit. hey, hey, they're getting sturdy. The night at the Palace of Auburn Hills when LeBron went nuts in the fourth quarter in overtime. And I always have to look back and say, now, what was it? It was like 25 straight points and 29 on a 30 or something like that. But it was one of those times where we're doing the show from the arena because it was the conference finals. And we're on the set and Kenny and Chuck are there. And it was the only time I've seen him speechless. I wanted to put the responsibility on myself and, and have me answer the call. Yes, James. Yes. And it counts. The Cavaliers down by one. And still defending on James. The defense was flat. Basically just, just gave him one of my left to right crossovers. Hey, and give him that. I, seen, I had him off balance. Hey. I trying to be aggressive as I could. And, Get the layup. Uh, to make Tate not even thinking about, you know, coming over and trying to block the shot. He has been spectacular. As the fourth quarter started running down, it got to a point where I said, You've come this far. There's no looking back now. You've and come this far. That's great talk. That's great talk right there. That's that's old time great talk. You we ain't come this far just to come this far. Leader, I can't allow my team to fail. He's dunking everything. You start to notice that you're in the zone. All you're thinking about is your next mate. Dunk. You know, everything is working, <clears throat> so now you have the defense off balance. They don't know if you're going to pull up and shoot a jump shot. They don't know if you're going to shoot a fadeaway. I wish that I can be like Mike. I wanna be, I wanna be like my guy. Wish I can be like my. It's one thing to leave a fan speechless, but when you leave a player speechless, because they've been there, they know, they know what it what it takes to play in a playoff game. You know what it takes to what it takes to win, and when they see a player doing it to that level that that LeBron did that night, and they're just like. I mean, I was getting that look, <laughs> but as we were watching it, it was just like shake your head, jaw dropping. Wow. It was like, who's going to dig down to win this basketball game? Top LeBron, behind the back dribble, four, filled it up. I don't believe it. He scored the last 24 of the last 25. <laughs> Jumps up with three, it's through. 46 points for LeBron James. He has scored the last... 27 of the last 28. 24 seconds to go in double OT. The D bears out. Time out. Good time out, Bron. With 11.4 to go. That's what I stay after practice for. And this is what I've been away room for. To, if it's that one game where you need to use every little bit of energy to help your team win. James, working it down, five seconds, four, three, James scores, and the Cavaliers come away with an improbable victory here at the Palace. He had a magical game against the Pistons. You, because you played against Jordan when he was, do you see the same velocity? You see similarities there? The difference is, um, you know, they're, they're both equally great. LeBron James always came to the game with the same thing that you came to the game with, where he was concerned about others, right? Mm. Not only did he have to, have to score, no. but he also had to make this one better, had to make, the, and he had the responsibility. Mm. Jordan, you know, took, Kobe, took it on the, himself, those yeah. guys, they come to the game and it's like, okay, Me. how many points you need Me. to win? Me. 40, right. right? Oh, 41 good enough? All right, tomorrow I'm gonna get 50. Mm -hmm. Oh, 50 ain't good enough? Had, okay, I can he get had 60. 48. He had 48. 48 points for LeBron James. He scored yeah, but it's more, it's it's still a mentality goal. difference, though. One of the great performances of all time. Right here. And yeah. we've been spoiled. We have. It's, it's, just been, it's just been remarkable what he's been able to do. Uh, you know, <laughs> and not only that, Excuse me. he came into the league with a lot on his shoulders. Right. 
what's LeBron like? LeBron, he's he's a cool guy. <laughs> he um, he he's a guy that actually for me when I was uh, coming through college when I first met him, he came to come a couple of my games. Just real down to earth, um, approachable. Um, gave me a lot of mental you know nuggets that I could take with me as a as I started my own NBA career. And um, you know, obviously as a basketball player, the dude's amazing. So. Uh, somebody that has a lot of pressure on him and uh, somehow seems to keep getting better. I know how we felt playing against Jordan. Like Jordan <laughs> was the most dominant player in our era. And I would we, would, we would talk for hours on the phone watching him play against another team. Oh, God damn. You know, just admiring him play. But at the same time, it was like there were things that he did in the air <clears throat> that we just couldn't do. <clears throat> and I look at LeBron <clears throat> James in this era and I say he's doing things that, you know, y'all just can't do. How, how do y'all feel about LeBron? And then we can talk about how we talked about Jordan. <laughs> I'd say uh, in terms of, you know, one guy being able to change the course of a game the way he can. Uh, he controls the pace. He does things that you just kind of look like, you know, how did, how, did, how did he do that? Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter sometimes how great a defense you play on him. And she has strength and power to get to the basket. Um, he's obviously developed that outside game that, that keeps you honest. Um, it's something that uh, you need all antennas up, all five guys. Every all night. five you need to be alert. Uh, if you don't bring it, he's, he's liable to try to expose you. So, uh, in terms of you know, that first championship run, <clears throat> um, matching up with him, and some of the stuff that he did on a nightly basis, it was – it was it was spectacular, but it, you know at the end of the day, like that gives you even more kind of competitiveness and fire to you know try to figure out how to overcome it and, and, and still win. And it gives you a little bit more gratifying feeling when you do too. So, you know, do you do you feel like a a strength difference? Because we talk about it a lot on television when we say, oh, he's so much bigger and stronger, mm -hmm. but I don't know what it's like to feel it. Can mm -hmm. you like describe? Oh, you can feel it, especially on the block. In transition, you just in awe of like I've never seen such a big human move so lightly on his feet. Like Ooh. his steps are small, but they're so quick. You know, it's incredible. I remember one time <clears> in the finals, <throat> I got the ball on a break, and Andre was behind me, Iguodala, and LeBron was chasing me. He said, "You better dunk it. You better dunk it." So I went up to flush it, and I almost killed myself because I was nervous LeBron was gonna come by and and just. Said, um, dunk, you better dunk it, dunk it, because he was coming full speed. Yeah, 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 chase yeah, so I almost. <laughs> The landing wasn't yeah. there. Right? Uh, uh, I was to push that thing, so I wasn't trying to see that ball go to half court. Right. So Iggy, no. Iggy, knew, Iggy knew the vibes. Iggy knew where he's at all the time. He's great at playing free safety, kind of like Jordan was, and you're just in awe of the things you can do in the air. I mean, like you said, me and Steph could never do these things, no matter how much you work, work on our vert, right. how many squats we do. We'll never be able yeah. to jump 40 inches and yeah. alter our body like that. We got to get it fundamentally. We got to get it for, with skill, but those dudes blend it with skill. And just sheer power. There's no nights off, and that's draining. Yeah, I know where he is. Um, you know, it, <laughs> Ooh. he's part of the front office group. He was really excited about about me missing, uh, you know, that shot a little bit more extra than I would have liked. But you know, he got a roof for his for his team, obviously. You know, right. Uh, you know, he showcased that. So, you know, I knew I had another quarter. And uh, the fourth quarter is my favorite. Read it perfectly. LeBron three on two. LeBron all the way. LeBron scores. Eight points. LeBron again. The field all the way. LBJ. Throw it down. Timeout. Cleveland. Here comes Braun all the way to score. Here we've only got three to shoot. Logo. Logo three for LeBron. It's LeBron. Just hit that big three. Down the middle. He goes three. LeBron stepping back. Oh, my three. gosh. Yo, relax. Trying to get it in the fridge. <clears throat> LeBron, tough shot. Calm yeah, down, tough, nigga. God damn. He was definitely the reason why uh, LeBron went for 21 in the fourth quarter and uh, outscored the whole Cavs team. So, you know, he looked for anything similar to what Kobe did. Look for anything for motivation. And <laughs> found it. The real part about it, look at the head snap. It was a quick Instant. head snap. Like, right? oh, no, you did. Like, like, he knew and the then he laugh. looked back like, at him again. Laugh. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I, I heard that I got laugh you. Before. I got you. You want to wake, you wanna make, wake me up? Right. I got something for you right here. And he went off. And that is the end of this first episode. 
Hey, bro, definitely a great video. I had a great time watching this video. Um, I I wonder if LeBron, if people like LeBron, Kobe, and Jordan, do they feel pressure? Right? And the only reason I say that is because I know they're human and all of that, and they have emotions and stuff, but, like, when you put in as much work as they do at their particular craft, you know... And you know you're better than everybody else on the court. And you know that you put in the work and that you deserve. You've earned this moment and you've earned this opportunity. You know, it's it's, it's almost like, you know, I've, there's a saying that goes, there's no such thing as pressure, there's only opportunity, right? And in and, and any moment where you feel pressure, it's really only a moment for opportunity, right? So I wonder, like, do they, how much, if any, do they really feel pressure you know because if i'm getting up 5 a.m i'm I'm spending a million dollars on my body i'm better than everybody else i'm working 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 hard when i get to the finals it's, i don't know if i'm feeling the pressure like that like i'm like i'm ready to dominate like you know like i don't know that's just me though but definitely like comment share subscribe be like these type of videos and i'll see you when i see you let me give this video a like real quick you feel me? Because this this video was top notch in a subscription. This video is elite. <clears throat> this is an elite video. You can tell you put a lot of time and effort into it. If they would just allow me to like it. But anyway, definitely like, comment, share, subscribe. You like these type of videos, and I'll see you when I see. Peace.